For more on the club's earnings and the business of football, I spoke to Michael Jarman, former player and head of equity strategy for H2O Markets. I asked him about what the Manchester United club should do after a, a very bad season. Um, next, the most important thing is to appoint a manager, of course. Uh, a manager that can kind of spearhead the next generation of Manchester United to ensure uh, as a football club they are back near the top of the table contesting for premiership trophies, domestic titles and, uh, and also European uh, uh, glory as well. Um, I, I think that will be key part one, uh, for federal foundation or, or, or part number one that they need to make sure that they stabilise what has been a very, very bad year on the pitch. Um, but off the pitch, uh, again, like you just said, you know, revenues look good uh, on the surface of things. Uh, Q3, what is it? Uh, um, uh, commercial revenues up around about 20%. Broadcasting rev revenues up 65% as well to around 35 million sterling. Um, so on the surface, on surface of things, from a commercial aspect, the club looks OK. And we are anticipated to be signing a deal, I would assume, with uh, our US counterparts over there, Nike, um, in terms of another sponsorship lucrative 10-year uh, contract, hopefully. This is a kit deal that's uh, banded to be around £600 million. Pounds. So but, but the business off the pitch which looks OK for now, but there are cracks starting to appear and uh, any businessman would want to start keeping an eye on them, including the fans. Some of the big fans uh, around here in the studio have told me about this Champions League that they will not be participating in because it's been a, a very difficult season on the pitch, as you mentioned as well. How much impact does that have ultimately on the, the financials of the, of the firm? Well, Edward Wood, the chief exec, said it's 35 million sterling uh, for next year as anticipated in terms of loss of uh, revenue. <sighs> One season out of the Champions League isn't going to cost the club too much. It's not great. Uh, that of course, they could have used that money for various things uh, going forward, such as uh, enhancing the squad in terms of player acquisitions, which is something that has been touted that we must do this season or going into the next one. Um, but again, you know, 35 million sterling. Manchester United as a brand globally, they're always going to attract big money so long as their pitch on the uh, their success on the pitch can be maintained. It's when that starts to wane, the club then can start getting into financial difficulty. And I can tell you now, adamantly, that I strongly believe that the uh, that the sacking of David Moyes wasn't just because of the on-the-pitch performances that he was seeing. He, it was expected that he would have got another season longer. Um, I think the commercial contract uh, deal, potentially with the new kit sponsors, such as if it is Nike, I think they started to ask a lot of questions about the club and the management tactics going forward. And no one commercially is going to enter into an agreement with Manchester United as lucrative as the numbers that have been banded around if the on-the-pitch performances aren't increasing. So I, I think that is something that the club must focus on going forward. One of the numbers that stands out, uh, at least to me, is the uh, overall debt. Uh, it did drop slightly, but it still stands at 350 million pounds. Uh, from your perspective, how big of an issue is that for not just this franchise, but all the franchise in the football world, uh, for, for the ones that have significant debt? Huge, hugely important. Um, I think there should have been a lot more questions asked about how the Glazers took over the club because they didn't buy the club with cash. They 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 bought the club and then you but used debt and then put the debt against the club to then acquire it. Uh, and you look at the, uh, the the competition within the league, the likes of the Manchester Cities who have got you know a shake who's come in and put his own capital into the business. Yeah, he's getting fined for financial fair play. I think a lot of questions should have been asked that in the first place. It, the, the good news is, look, the, the debt is falling. It's down around about 4%. And I think it's something that the Glazers as well, uh, along with Edward, with, they've renegotiated their interest payments. So interest payments are now lower. Well, uh, I have a personal question for you. You're also a unique personality as well because you're a former player. Uh, and during the time that Man U went public, you went on the record to say that you would basically, you're a fan of the team, but you didn't invest in the team. Does this change anything mm -hmm. for you? Does this make you want to invest with the stock price having come down and perhaps even though they have their issues, longer term, do you feel confident? No, uh, not at all. I, th I still think Manchester United, I think football in general is a rich man's paradise. Listen, the only way I'd ever put my money into a sports franchise in the UK um, or a soccer franchise within the UK is if I was, if I saw FIFA come out and put a global cap on players' 
earnings and salaries within the season because that is the main thing that costs the club going forward. Uh, renegotiating contracts, getting new players in. If you look at the actual financials that have been reported, you will see that over half of our operating costs come from wages, of which have risen 20%. And if Manchester United are going to be more active in the transfer market this season, they're going to have to spend more money. Look at what the stock price has done since then. Manchester United was pitched to investors as a growth stock. But the stock's up 10%. The S&P 500 has outperformed it. So why on earth would I want to go and put my money into a company that is li likely to have operating costs increase on it in the, in, in, in the short term and no guarantees of any long-term success off the pitch on, and on the pitch as well? So I'm still not a fan. I'm still not a buyer of, of, of any business uh, soccer-orientated at all. I think it's a rich man's paradise.